Well, here we go. It's Plymouth Argyle versus Sunderland. And the travelling fans have got one hell of a journey today. 400 miles all the way down to Home Park to the Green Army. Let's hope we can come back with three points yet again and make it five victories on the bounce. The downside today is there's no Lee Catamore. Lee Catamore has not travelled with the team today. I don't know what's the matter with him. It must be an injury. Let's hope, touch wood. It's not too much of a bad injury. It's a little injury, little niggle that came out for one match only and he's back again for the FA Cup match or the match after against Wickham at home. We won three points today down Home Park and in replacement for Catamol comes in George Honeyman in the centre of defence. Miguel and George Honeyman. It hasn't worked before in the past. Let's hope George can take a leaf out of Catamol's book and do all the running around in the park go to helping the strikers up front to back to be the fifth defender. What we miss when Catamol is out, we have the fifth defender. He goes all over the place. He's back on the goal line, stopping the ball in the back of the net, and he's up up front, helping Marja, trying to create goals. What an absolute asset Catamol is in this league, in our team. Now we have George Honeyman coming in. George Honeyman, the captain. Let's have a captain's performance today, George. Come on, let's earn your stripes today. You are the man in the centre. You pull the strings. You do the, the Catamol role. Let's have you back in defence, helping the defenders and creating chances up front. Let's win this match. If it's a 3-0 away victory, I'll be over the moon. If it's a 1-0 away victory, I'll be over the moon. But my prediction, I'm going to go for a 2 or 3-1 victory. I think we'll let a goal in today because Catamol has saved us a couple of times last week at home against Southend. I watched them back in defence. It tracks back and the tackles were absolutely amazing. So we want George Honeyman to do the same thing today. Marge just starts up front. Let's hope Marge is fully fit now and scores a couple of goals today. Hopefully a 3-1 victory. We're nice and comfortable with Plymouth getting a, a consolation goal towards the end. I'll be over the moon with a clean sheet. We've had four successive victories and I think it is going to be... Yeah, oh. We've had three clean sheets on the bounce. Let's go for the fourth one on the bounce. Four clean sheets. If not clean sheet, 3-1 away victory. I'll take any, any, any away victory today and bring those happy fans back safe and sound another 400 miles back up to Sunderland enjoy your day out and I'll see you at half time well here we go it's half time it's Plymouth Argyle nil Sunderland nil and at this moment in time it's a nice pleasant game of football all nicey nicey passing the ball around nice and easy not much in the way of hard tackling football whatsoever just a nice pleasant game of football it's no good we need to come out second half and take it to Plymouth in a nasty way as in put them to the sword couple of goals we need to make the second half count we normally do we normally are much fitter and a stronger team with more quality in our side and we always come good second half and we put the game to bed let's do the same this time let's Jack get this team in especially get um, Honeyman in and let's get this team rattled up for the second half with a bit of intensity. We need more intensity in the second half, more quality. We go, we're going quite fast to the half. We, we break quite quickly. We do. The counter attack is really good. We get to the last third. Then we just stop, get a cup of tea out and have a drink and take our time. There's no rush. We need to make our quick breaks count and keep the pressure going, keep the quality going, keep the intensity going. Push on to the final third. Quick thinking. And let's get these goals in the back of the net. We need Honeyman to drive these players forward. We need to win. Portsmouth are winning 1-0. Peterborough are winning 0-0. We need to win this game of football. Plymouth are not a good side. right? That's why they're down the bottom. No disrespect to Plymouth and to their team and to their fans. Good fans, the Green Army, but they're not a great side. We need to be winning these matches. Let's make it 4 5 Matches on the bounce without getting beat. We need to do this today. We need to come out second half. Require a couple of shots. McGeady hasn't done much. I mean, the corners, we've had three or four corners and the ball being pathetic in the first half. I mean, they're going to put the ball in the box. That's all we have to do. Jack Ross, the boss, will not settle for this easy, easy, nicey, nicey game of football. He will switch it around. He will make substitutions if things aren't going right. That's what he does best. He knows, he adapts straight away. He adapts to a game of football. And I'm confident he will have this team up and ready to go in second half. And we can beat Plymouth. It might not be 3-1. It might not be 2-1. I'm happy with a 1-0 or 2-0 win. But 
the main important thing is today that we do not lose this match. Let's make sure we score the first goal and take it to them and I'll see you at full time. Get in! McGady! Oh, what a screamer! Oh, yes, 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 yes. McGady's just scored. McGady's just scored for Sunderland. 15 minutes or something inside the second half, yes? Oh, brilliant. 1 0 Sunderland. Get in. We'll come on strong second half. Jack Moss has done the business at half time. He's told the players what he wants. And McGady's got two goals in two games. Yes! I'm so happy. All they can hear is the Sunderland Weir fans and the Sunderland Weir fans are going absolutely berserk. 3,000 plus of Weir fans. Get in. I'm so happy for them. I really am. Yes. Jack Ross does the business again. He does what he gets paid to do. Sunderland under the cosh. Plymouth, well, oh, it was a kitchen sink time. Everything in the box. And McLaughlin, two fantastic saves. Then Jack Ross takes off Maguire, brings on all night to shiver things, off in the, shiver things up in the middle of the park. All nine gets into the penalty area. All nine is fouled and suddenly get a penalty in the 88th minute. And that man, McGeady. McGeady, right? There's no denying when McGeady is fit and his mind's on the job. He is better than leg one. It's like Catamore, better than leg one. Absolutely brilliant. McGeady takes up the, take the penalty. Gooch wanted the penalty. McGeady wanted the penalty. I think Honeyman must have came in and sorted it out. Give it to McGeady. McGeady took the penalty and he scores. Turn up the Sunderland. It looks like three pointers coming back by the Sunderland fans tonight. Jack Moss and his team. Well done. Another victory. Pete the Bower are getting beat 1 0 off Wickham. So Sunderland will be going second tonight. Get in! Fucking get in! Well, it's finished. Plymouth Argyle 0, Sunderland 2, and a McGeady brace. And two absolutely world-class saves from McLaughlin to keep Sunderland in the game when it was 1-0. And this drink goes out to all the players and the manager who did the business at half-time. Took them in at half-time, told them what he wanted, and they came out and they performed with McGeady Brace. Well done. Cheers to all the Weir fans. 3,000 plus Weir fans cheering all the way down 400, 800 mile round trip to Plymouth Home Park. What a brilliant day. Five matches unbeaten. Another clean sheet. Four clean sheets on the bounce. Baldwin, Flanagan, centre of defence. Absolute awesome today. Well done, lads. McGady Brace and McLaughlin. Fantastic saves. World class saves. If he was English, he would be second behind Pickford in the England squad because he's brilliant. Oh, I needed that. Where do we start? Where do we start? Where do we start? Uh, that's where we start. No, we start with absolute brilliant performance. Five wins on the bounce. We are now in second place in League One. And we're coming up behind Portsmouth. Portsmouth won one note the day against 10 men Bradford. Summoned a beat 11 men Plymouth 2 0 away yet again. I mean. Uh, awesome uh, Jack Ross the manager is doing he's pulling the strings doing the business at half time like I said the first half it was nice and easy it was too easy it was a nice too easy game of football nothing much happening second half comes out McGeady with an absolute fantastic strike from outside the box to put the ball in the battle net to make it 1-0 to Sunderland and then Jack Ross brings on 0-9 who gets fouled in the penalty area and McGeady steps up and makes it 2-0. Like I said before, McGeady is an absolutely brilliant player. When his mind's on the job and he puts the fucking effort in 100% for the lads, he is a great asset to this team. Absolutely brilliant. He's above League One standard when he puts his mind on the job. And today, his mind was on the job and he did a great job. A two-goal brace. Absolutely brilliant. And please for McGeady. But... John McLaughlin in goal is absolute. I'll tell you what, mind. I wasn't quite sure at the beginning of the season when we signed a Scottish goalkeeper, you know, a Scottish goalkeeper. You know what Scottish goalkeepers are like when we signed John McLaughlin. And he's 30 year old. He's not like a, a 22 year old up and coming man. Up and coming goalkeeper. He's 30 year old. But oh, I'll tell you what, he's been absolutely awesome. Awesome lately. If the defenders don't do the job, he saves us. Absolutely brilliant. We have to give you. 100% for Flanagan and Baldwin. Jack Ross has got the two centre-backs he wants in the middle of the park. Flanagan, 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 Flanagan is no funny. Flanagan, Touchwood, has stayed fit for a while now. He played on a pre-season. 
like Jack Ross said, he played more pre-season than he wanted him to play, and he got injured. But he's come back now. I mean, I mean, he's seven foot tall. He's an absolutely fantastic young defender. I'm over the moon for Flanagan and Baldwin as well. Has been solid all season. Absolutely solid. They put their bodies on the line today. I mean, if you look at them, right? I watched at the South End last week. They're not like, you know, Michael Turner is a big fucking bloke, tall, strong, muscly. Flanagan and Baldwin are both thin. I mean, they're both physically fit, obviously, and they're good defenders. But they're not like they're not a bit like brick shit houses. But they do their fucking job and they absolutely put the bodies on the line today. I bet they've got a few knocks today and I hope they recover well for next week in the FA Cup tie. They might even rest them in the FA Cup, but I would I would play them personally because we're on a roll. Don't change a win inside. Uh, unless we bring unless Lee Catamol's fit. Even, even so, if Lee Catamol's not fit, put him on the bench, give him a rest, get him ready for the next match and hope to wick him. And play the team we played today in the FA Cup. And let's go on a cup run. Uh, <clears throat> And James is doing a great job with Hume being injured. He must be back soon. And Oviedo, I think he was injured as well. But, I mean, James is doing a fantastic job. I said earlier on in the season, I want James in the team, and he's doing a great job. Matthew's on the right, doing a great job. But two centre-backs, though. Jack Ross has got the players he wants in the middle of the defence. Flanagan and Baldwin. He's bought them. He's brought them. He knew exactly what they could do. And they've done the business. <coughs> <coughs> Second half performance is great. Plymouth took the kitchen sink at Sunnan in the second half. When we took the goal, McGeady scored, it was 1-0 up. They put everything in that box. And our central defenders and the keeper were magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. I can't believe how good McLaughlin is. He must be Scotland's number one keeper. Come on. McLeish gets Scotland... As get fucking McLaughlin is Scotland's number one keeper, Alex McLeish. If you don't put fucking McLaughlin as your number one keeper, you know fuck all. <laughs> ah, 3,000 plus away fans. I mean, are we? It's a whole weekend, isn't it? <laughs> Setting off at 3 o'clock in the morning. Saturday morning. 3 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Went all the way down to Plymouth. I've been to Torquay myself before on a holiday years and years ago. My dad drove down and it took him forever in a day. Set off at like, ah, oh, God knows, five o'clock on, on the night time. We didn't get there the next day. So the drive down there or whatever transport you take, the bus, the train, <coughs> 400 miles is a long way. Them fans are absolutely brilliant. All you could hear when it was nil nil was the Sunderland fans. And then could you hear them? Oh, fucking could you hear them when we were leading 1 nil and then 2 nil? Boom! Absolutely. Singing like Pavarotti used to sing. Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant away fans. I mean, I'm over the moon with the winter day. Five wins on the belt. Four clean sheets. It's Jack Ross is fucking underestimated. He is, he is one of the best. Managers now in the leagues. He, he is up and coming, fantastic manager. I'm so pleased for him. He gets on. He was at an interview today, or I mean, during the week. He gets on so well with Stuart Donald. Stuart Donald. We have to give Stuart Donald loads of praise. He has got Jack Ross in, and Jack, him and Jack Ross get on really well. They do. They get really well. They, they were talking until eight o'clock one night during the week, just because, just because they're really friendly. I mean, you want no pressure off your, off the owner. To the manager, no pressure. Let, let the manager do his job. Let the manager pick his team. Let the manager choose his own squad. And that's what Stuart Donald's doing. I mean, well done, Stuart Donald. I take my hat off here. Done the business. You got Jack Ross in, and Jack Ross has built his team. Oh, this is this is awesome, awesome. Second in the league now, and I really think that we can just kick on from here now. We can second half of the season. We've got to take this league by storm. Win this league. Man of the match. Man of the match, I mean, McGeady scores two goals. Uh, what else can you do? McLaughlin, two world-class saves. Baldwin and Flanagan in the central defence. I mean, I'm going to give it to McLaughlin, because I think he's absolutely world-class. McLaughlin, my man of the match. Second, McGeady, third. Baldwin and Flanagan are just brilliant. I mean, I'm pleased that um, Honeyman is captain, and he's got his team on a winning, on a winning run again. Win and run again? What am I talking about, man? Are you stupid? Win and run? We, we're five unbeaten, man. What are you talking about? Eh? You, oh. Tell you what it is, though, man. When you get older, you lose your mind a bit. You do, you lose your mind a bit. Never mind. 
those fans all come home tonight. Tonight? Maybe it's tomorrow? <laughs> Safe and sound. And I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to the FA Cup next week against Port Vale. Let's go on a good FA Cup run. Let's get let, let, let's put Port Vale to the sword next week. Let's win against Port Vale. Let's get into the next round. Win the next round and into the third round where we belong. My last thoughts tonight go out to all the family and friends, supporters, players, fans of Leicester City. I personally thought that Leicester should have cancelled the match tonight because that, that's horrific what happened last week. Horrific. Uh, it should happen to nobody because, I mean, he must be one of the best. He must have been one of the best owners in the entire world. What he did for Leicester City was absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. What a horrific accident. And the day the Leicester players came out and they won the match against Cardiff. They won against Cardiff. For the fans, for the owner, for everybody involved with Leicester City Football Club. It's just an amazing winter day for them. So, <clears throat> And before the match today against Plymouth, it was a one minute, one minute silence. You know, just for respect. Of the people who died in the helicopter crash, the five people who died, five fantastic people who died in the helicopter crash, a one minute silence, and everyone did themselves just as great, was proud, proud of them all. And that's it, basically. So I'll catch you next week at the FA Cup match, and hopefully we can go through to the next round of the FA Cup. And just well done to the whole team today. What a great team performance. Is 11 players out there. Not all of them can be man of the match, but they've all did the job, they've done well, and Jack Ross. Absolutely brilliant. And the 12th man fans, enjoy your safe journey home. And I'll catch us next time.